Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Davo, Tom and Callum here for the podcast. We've got a little bit of uh, exclusive content for you this morning. And uh, Davo, it actually happened over the weekend. Oh, yeah. After we were all hanging out all day Saturday and mm-hmm. you had to go work at Cherry, the nightclub you MC out that night. Yes, it's a God's work. Someone's got to do it. Tell the kids to put their hands up. Yeah, <laughs> thank God as well. Well, me and Callum, we accompanied our boss Sophie to a birthday party in the city. And we get to this pub. Mm, and what friends our boss <laughs> hangs around with. You know, she, it's, a real, it's a real spotlight on the people she, she associates with that me and Tom have been tied in with. I was saying this this morning. Her group of friends, they are all individually chaotic in their own way. And it's not like they all band together and be like, woo, girls night. They're all just like, meh, meh, <laughs> Like, all yeah. of them chaos. It's a lot. We've actually got Sophie here in the studio with us. Sophie, phoning a friend here. Um, <laughs> what did you? Th- what do you think of your friends? Yeah, I think that they're all good people, but when they have some drinks, they get weird. And then so it's they're lucky that they have me to kind of lead them and bring them back well, together. You're, you're, you're the, you're the <laughs> I lately I've become the mum and I'm making sure everyone's okay checking don't in. don't know about that. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that at a, a later date. There is always a point in the night where Sophie switches. You know, yeah. you'll be normal, yeah. normal, normal, and then... Yeah. You're in one of the girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do here, Sophie, is I'm going to uh, ask you a few questions about this party and you can just fill in the blanks. Right. Right. So is it true or false? A few people at this party <laughs> early on, by, might I add, got cut off from the bar we were at. It is true. And what happened after they got cut off? Well, firstly, the reason they got cut off is because they walked in and slipped over <laughs> and fell onto the ground while eating every single chair on the way down oh, was... and then proceeding to lie there. And then all my other friends didn't have a quick enough reaction, so she's lying there for a while, like, crying. And this is only about an hour or so in. She's just arrived. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, that was crazy. Um, yeah, when we when we arrived, uh, one of your mates, like, immediately uh, slipped and fell and banged her head on the chair, <laughs> and then we helped her up, uh, and it seemed all good for a little bit there. Yeah. Now, after they got cut off, where, where did one of them go? So she decided that the only way she could keep drinking and not to go home is to go and hide in the bathroom cubicle. Right. I mean, that's not fun. You know, like, that's not like the way you keep the night going. Yeah, you know? it seems like that, that is like real the pinnacle of maybe I should just go home because like, what fun yeah. are you having by yourself in a bathroom? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, and she'd rather stay in the bathroom and drink than go outside and just not drink. So she's drinking alone in the bathroom in the cubicle? Yeah, in the toilet cubicle, the first one when you walk in. And how did you guys know that she was in there? <laughs> and my friend Hannah said, I've got something to show you. Proceeded to take me in there and then do a secret <laughs> knock on the cubicle door. And then this girl came out um like looking as if she was undercover like in hiding like aunts just like a little crack open through the door and i'm like hey what are you doing i like how they had the coherence enough to like form a secret handshake whilst while being that drunk you know to like you know remember that <laughs> because god forbid she go home so yeah <laughs> we hey, also, a, also a could have moved day. on yeah but that was up. It's, I mean, this is insane, isn't it? Hiding out in a toilet. Just like, surely if she was like, oh, look, guys, can we just go to another pub yeah. nearby? Everyone would have just yeah. gone with her. Yeah. And yeah. Then what was funny is that I went outside and then the boyfriend, <laughs> he was like, yeah, man, I've been barred as well. <laughs> so he didn't want to go inside either. A what real a, power couple. A dynamic couple, man. <laughs> <laughs> one's locked in the toilet, <laughs> one's stuck outside. Rattled as. <laughs> Yeah. So um. Anyway, thanks for the plus one no invite worries. to that. I can't wait for the next party yeah. with all your mates and see what happens. Yeah. Mm, I think if you uh, look up the definition of woo girls, <laughs> it's these <laughs> lot. <laughs> Let's get into the podcast. You're listening to Dave O, Tom and Callum, the podcast. We're putting it to you, Adelaide. Tom and Callum present This or That on Fresh 92.7. Yes, we were having a chat on Friday, boys, um, about our general habits, and you two revealed something that really shook the station more than the latest Skrillex. I don't know why it has shaken so many people and rubbed people the wrong way, because it's a perfectly normal thing 
for for young men and you know anybody all over to do. Yeah, it's kind of spread like wildfire, and I still stand with the point that we are completely in the right, and it is quite normal. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, Tom and Carla, much like your puppet counterparts, Bert and Early, Ernie. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> you two like to wear shower caps. Oh, Bert, got my little <laughs> rubber ducky. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Love uh, them. Uh, yeah. Obviously, like they, 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 what, I don't understand what's wrong with wearing a shower cap, Davo. Well, look, I understand as a woman with long hair, maybe you need one, right? But honestly, I don't think I've ever, ever used one. It's unnecessary, but also the idea of Callum getting his family shower cap and popping it on his head before a, for a rinse off feels really... No, okay, so I, it, I don't have a family shower cap. There's two different shower caps, one, and also... And there's three of you, so right, there is so a family element there. My dad's bald. He doesn't wear a shower <laughs> cap. <laughs> Yeah, but I would have put it past him. He's odd, you know. Um, but yeah, so pretty much, like, I don't think it's that weird. I think why would I, in the privacy of my home, worry about how <laughs> exactly. I look? One, and why wouldn't I want to do something that's more convenient? Why would I want to go to bed with the wet hair? Exactly right. I'm, I'm exactly with you. Look, if I'm, it depends on when I'm taking the shower. Yep. If I get home straight away from work, say two, three o'clock. Okay. And if I decide to shower, then I'll wet my hair and I'll just let it dry. Wild. No drama there. But if I'm waiting to have my shower till after dinner time, yeah, I'm going to put a shower cap on and not wet my hair because why wouldn't I rather sit under the shower and oh. just immerse myself in the experience and instead of having to like lean my head out halfway out and you can't get your whole body in when you twist and turn it's all like it's honestly not that dramatic to be able it to really wash is. your face your back your ass whatever I- you need to wash you you can do that without putting your head under and my argument as well with the shower cap it's not relaxing going under the stream because you is. can hear the loud bang 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 I as love that. water it's like, on it's like you're in a thunderstorm or something but also yeah. you can keep your ears <laughs> out of the shower cap you don't need to tuck the ears in no but I do want to be immersed in the full shower and the full water the full experience and yeah I don't want to have to edge out or anything, but I think it really does come down to, I don't want to have to, even if I'm not really going to bed, I don't want to have to sit on my couch with wet hair. Yeah. Exactly. Little, little bits of wet hair dangling on your neck and stuff. It's I annoying think, as. I think it's so unusual. I think you two are like little old ladies. It can't be that unusual old. if shower with caps your fre- exist. With your fresh perm sitting there worried about getting it wet. <laughs> I, every, but, okay, riddle me this, Dave. All right. Do you own a shower cap no. in your house? No. Oh, bull bull crap. We crap. do not. Bollers. I will get my underwear to take a photo right now. There is no shower cap in sight. What, so if you wash or like, if you colour your hair or something like that, you don't... Use a shower cap. No. You're always getting your hair wet. Yes. Well, Every no, 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 night. No, no, You're no, a no, psycho. No, no, no. I just, I shower like everyone else and not put my head under the stream. I wash my face, I get my the job done, and the hair, it stays dry. No, you still get your hair wet even you if don't. you do. And then you, you get do. little sprinkles sh- on it. The ricochet well. of the shower. I showered this on. morning, unlike you two animals, and I didn't wet my hair, and you can see it's not wet. It's fine. Yeah, but how was the shower experience? You weren't, fully, you weren't fully immersed in nah. the water's capabilities. This has to go to the fresh fam, guys. This is crazy. Get involved. Defenders of the shower cap. I'd love to see you on the text line. Do you wear shower caps or not, Adelaide? That's it. We need the shower cappers to rally with us to band together against these monsters. No, tell these two to grow up. Look, we do have some audio as well. Uh, On Saturday, we were out uh, with uh, one of our sponsors, Maz, and uh, their director, Ash, had this to say about the shower cap situation. Tom's uh, curls get the girls, so I understand the shower cap, but, you know, Callum's fast and loose. Why the hell would you put a shower cap on that? Seriously, you ain't got 30 seconds to dry your hair. Just doesn't get Ash it. Ash was baffled, though, and uh, he, he, he really was taken back. However, that hasn't stopped me and Tom from wearing the shower cap. I did it last night. I'll do it again today. Some people getting uh, quite involved on the text line. We're going to have oh. to leave a few texts out. Uh, <laughs> Come so on, guys. Thanks, thanks for texting in. Really appreciate a lot yeah, of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did get a bunch in here. Someone did text in and said, yes to the shower cap. You can't wash your neck or face without using a cap. Good on you. That is insane. Of course you can wash your face and neck. Not to the nah. full, not to the full not, maximum yeah. capability. Not without you getting to, you your hair wet. You want to dunk your head yes, under you that can. water? Nah, nah, not without getting your hair wet. Every single day, boys, no, I do this. You'd have to use a flannel and stuff. You, you know, you can't go straight under. Another text here from uh, Sean in Brisbane. <laughs> Shower caps are shit. All right, Sean. <laughs> Thought you were one of our allies, Thanks. Sean. <laughs> Thanks for getting involved. <laughs> Someone said yes for shower cap. 
help stop getting the hair wet from the steam in the mm. hot shower. Yeah, absolutely. Very practical. This one's a bit on the nose. It says, real men don't wear shower caps. It's, come on, boys. It's not yeah. really about right. gender. Well, we're changing the game <laughs> as yeah. well. We're, we're innovators. We're leaders of the new free world. That's and shower it. caps will be a part of it. So uh, we're pioneers of shower caps, you know. Uh, you someone... watch 10 years, Davo. Everyone's going to be wearing shower they caps. They won't. They did there it 10 be... years ago. It's yeah, done. Yeah, it's coming there, back. There will be a shower cap museum somewhere <laughs> with us uh, made of bronze statues is at the front with shower caps on. Yeah, there's plenty more here. Uh, got, sorry, boys, but I've never worn one in my life. Another one said, you boys drink beer out of wine glasses, don't ya? Nah, yeah. love yous. <laughs> <laughs> nice little sentiment at the end there. Just All to right. heal the burn. Let's go to the phone lines here. We've got Ali and Mobbury. Ali, uh, shower caps, yay or nay? <laughs> Definitely a nay. <laughs> Why a nay? Oh. Come on, Ali, tell them. What, you don't wear a shower cap? I have hair down to my butt, and I've never worn a shower cap in my life. I think my mum made me try one when I was young, and it was like wearing a tin roof on my yes! head. Yes! You don't put ever. your ears in. You just leave the ears. You're all wearing it wrong. You're wearing the shower cap wrong. Can I say, if you don't put I'll it... wash my face. I wash my neck. Of course. And no hair, no water getting anywhere. No, you're lying. Your hair's getting wet. I also <laughs> feel that if you've got your ears out, you're leaving a gap, so your sideburns and that sort of part oh, of your hair's okay. going to get wet anyway. A sideburn is nothing, all right? It's nothing. <laughs> Thanks for getting involved, Ali. Where's got, the line? We're going to Rhiannon in Chandler's Hill. Rhiannon, good morning. Uh, shower caps, yay or nay? Absolutely yay. Yes, yes. For sure. yes. Well, thank you for joining our uh, allied service on the shower caps. Now, do you have a partner or anything? Do they wear a shower cap? I do. My boyfriend steals mine sometimes and chucks it on because, you know, if you're having a late night shower, you don't have to go to bed with wet hair. Exactly. Yeah, but when you look at him with that shower cap, can you still respect him and find him attractive? <laughs> oh, look, it gives him, t- puts him down to about a five for just a few minutes. <laughs> okay, so, so not- you only drop a few <laughs> points. Okay, okay. But Rhiannon, as men, we aren't leaving the house in shower caps. We're doing it from the privacy and sanctity of our bathrooms. Oh, yeah, no one else is going to see. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. If, th- hey, can thank I you. Ask, if you have like a, if you have a bit of an intimate moment and you're in there too, does he put the shower cup on? Surely not. Oh, no. If, if I'm wearing a shower cup, he's not wearing it. Just oh, you've got... On afterwards. It's, it's a community one, okay. Yeah, uh, Yeah. unfortunately, yeah. Shared system. Oh, Christmas present idea for you there, Rhiannon. <laughs> uh, shower cup for the partner. Oh, that would make his day. That would $2 came up. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Chris Good Hey, let's wrap it up with Alex. Alex, good morning. Uh, yay or nay to the shower caps? No, absolutely not, guys. I mean, what are you talking about? It's, it's called a towel. It won't be wet hair. And so, it's Alex, a towel. you're wiping your behind and then wiping no. your, your, yeah, your yeah, beautiful you locks. Hey, beautiful locks. If, if, you are, if you are showering properly, when you get out, you're all clean. And yeah. you just use a towel. It's fine. <laughs> if you're worried about worry, wiping your ass and your face, then you're not washing from. Hey, we don't have to wash. That's not what the argument's about. And technically, you'd be wiping your face and your butt anyway because you're. It has nothing exactly. to do with your hair. The towel still doesn't. You've washed do, your face. The towel doesn't dry quick enough though. You can still use a towel on your hair. And I don't think take you're going to be using after. a towel properly. Oh, sorry, <laughs> but you can't say we don't know how to use a uh, towel. That's not what the argument's about. If it's, you can't dry your hair, all right. Like you don't have long hair like David yeah. or some other or my partner. If you can't dry your hair with a towel, you're not doing it right. Alex, I've got to ask, have you ever worn a shower cap in your life? I have, once. Yeah. And I had lice when I was little. It was terrible. Uh, no, yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a life-changing experience. <laughs> Keep the argument going. First rule of the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast is you don't talk about the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast. The second rule of the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast is you don't talk about the Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast. And geez, I'm becoming a bitter old man because I'm ticked off again. Oh, God. I'm bloody ticked off. Simon Mungrel. Oh, geez, it's ticked off, Tom. Yes, it's happened again. I'm getting over it. It's funny. It's funny uh, that your <laughs> reputation is becoming ticked off, Tom. Like when Davo took uh, it took 20 minutes to get a juice made the other day. And oh. you, you were saying how annoyed you were, and I said you should really send this into ticked <laughs> off, Tom. <laughs> but yeah. Tom, as well, I'm really happy that you've now got a place where you can healthily sort of get it out. You know, it's, I think yeah. it was pent up for too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all coming out as one right now. And this happened last week on Friday. 
this really annoyed me. Me and Callum, we were walking down uh, doing some shopping in Rundle Mall when we decided that uh, we. I, I bought a new watch the other week, right? And I spent a lot of money on this watch. So Must I had, be nice. No. <laughs> Well, it's not because I had no money to get the links taken out. Right. And we actually had uh, someone call up, Robbie the Watch Doctor in City Cross. He was kind enough to call up and say, hey, come on down to uh, my shop and we'll take the links out for free for you. Yep. So nice. Really so nice, nice of him. Great bloke. Yeah, absolutely a great bloke. Also, he was telling us he's the only ground floor uh, watch uh, repairer in the city. Hey, there you go. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely head down City Cross. He was an absolute legend. Had plenty of stories for us. Too. Hashtag not sponsored. He was, he was, a, he was a massive character, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but on our way in... We we witnessed something, me and Callum, and we both sort of looked at each other and sighed quite loudly and verbally at the at the sight of this. Okay. We, didn't, we didn't rage, we didn't go off or swear or any of that because we're mature, but, you know, there was a bit of grimacing and a bit of sighing going on and the disappointment in society, you yeah. know, reflected by what they're doing. So okay. obviously City Cross, big food court area, yeah. right? A lot of people go there for their lunch and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And as we're walking through, and this is the hot day, this is that uh, Friday, it was bloody hot outside, yep. right? Plenty of chairs and tables still in this beautiful air-conditioned food court. However, there was a group of people sitting on the floor in the middle of the walkway eating their lunch. No, no. Get up and get a chair. You can head to the Instagram at Fresh927. There's a picture of them up there. <laughs> Do you know how many people we've, there were? We've, yeah. Shame. We've, Shame. Covered, Shame. we've covered the faces. We've covered the faces, yeah. But uh, it was crazy, and there's a good Shame. handful of them all sitting on the floor, and they were literally Shame. causing an obstruction when you walk through that you could trip on them. I looked at them, and it looked like a hippie bongo circle or something <laughs> just in the middle of the food court. What could possibly drive someone to sit on a food court floor? One, disgusting, it's unhygienic. Gross. You're hmm. in the way. There's tables and chairs. Did they bring a picnic blanket? No, they had all their bags everywhere, though, oh. sprawled across. They were sitting Yuck. in like a, yeah, it was like a duck, duck, goose circle. Grow up and get a chair and sit down on it. Don't sit on the floor in the middle of the walkway. You know what's You funny? had to walk around him. <laughs> I'm sucks. getting ticked off. <laughs> He's getting too ticked off, but you know what's crazy? They started getting a mass following. As By the time we came back to them, we there saw... There was three more we, of them. Yeah, we saw yeah. more people join in this circle. <laughs> Here's a PSA. All right. If you're going to a food court, sit on a bloody chair, yeah, will you? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> You're listening to Dave o, Tom and Callum, the podcast. We're heading over to the UK for this next story, boys, and it's about this chicky babe who's gone on a date with one of the great Prince Charmings. Okay. Mm, so the pair met at a pub for lunch, Yeah. and they obviously got the menus out, and the man said, hey, I don't need to read the menu because I'm happy to eat what's left on the table next to them. No way. No. No way. So he's, so, he's antici- no. so he's anticipating going to the pub and, you know, full well not knowing that he's not going to get a meal and that there will definitely be something he can salvage off another table. Yes. He's got to this date and said, no, 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 you order what you like, sweetheart. I'm actually not going to get any food. That bloke's toast and curried sausage oh, next to me looks dude. pretty damn good. Can't keep my hands to myself. I reckon that's a worth a walkout on the day. Oh, I, reckon, that's a, I, reckon that's, that's, I reckon that's an immediate walkout. If there's a red bolted. flag I've ever heard one, that's it. That's disgusting. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's not even a money situation because this chicky babe offered to pay for his lunch. He flatly refused and then proceeded to eat the leftover cold toast and wrinkled sausages from the filthy plates of strangers. <laughs> And it's like, I bet he knows that this is his intention the whole time. So I guess in his head, is he just hoping, God, I wish someone has a palmy today. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, get yeah, that. Yeah. You know, he's got, the, he's got these inklings in his head of, you know, what he wants to eat for that day. So apparently the woman sat there and she watched as he scoffed his face with all this discarded that food. Sucks. And he would sit there justifying his actions, saying he hated seeing food go to waste. Oh, so he's no, like going for the but, environmental yeah. route. Don't try and take the high road when you're just there eating someone's <laughs> discarded food. Scrap. Don't worry, it's vegan. I'm going to steal the tofu. I'm a good bloke. <laughs> so basically, the chicky babes got on the internet and said, Oi, is this normal? Is this something that happens often? Oh, you don't, don't need even to go to, to the internet to ask, is this normal, do hey, we? Hey, you say that, you say that, Tom, but I have seen this happen before in real life. No, what? Where? So me and my mates, we were at Nando's one day and we were watching this couple. They were leaving, they were finished their meals and whatever and off they trot out 
the side of the restaurant. And as they were walking out, the man looked at someone's plate that was obviously empty. The table was empty. And he grabbed two chips off the plate and ate them. The partner that was with him slapped him on the back and he said, What's the harm? Oh, I'll tell you what the harm is. You don't know what that person, like who that person was before you. Exactly. They could, they could have anything going on. The only time I could see it is semi-acceptable. Here we go. Okay. Semi. Here we go. I Callum don't think Leaney there's any scenario the where it could be semi-acceptable, <laughs> you know, but hit, hit it later on us. You've assessed the person that's eating the whole time, so you've checked them out and you're like, okay, they don't look like a freak. <sighs> And then they get up and oh. they, you, you assess what chips, Callum. and I'll say chips only, chips only is something like finger food, nothing like a hot dog or whatever, finger oh. food. <laughs> and and granted, it's after a night out and you've had quite a few to drink and you just want to peck on some little chips. Callum, have you ever heard the expression, uh, don't judge a book by its cover? That is exactly why you can't assess a person <laughs> I think and you, decide I think you can judge they're who you're gonna... safe, cold, soggy <laughs> chips. I think you can, uh, you can make the assumption on who's eating. Let's get a conversation going. Is, this, is it okay to eat off someone's plate or have you even seen someone eat off someone's I, plate? I reckon if you're a restaurant worker, if you've been you know, working in hospitality for a while, surely you see it more often than people think. I reckon it would happen quite a bit. I <sighs> have never in my 23 years seen this go down. I, and, I'm, and I'm happy to say that. And I hope I never do have to. Mate, I trust no one. I'm not trusting their goddamn chips. Hey, plenty of people getting involved right now uh, on the text line is going bananas, but somebody's texted in saying, why is it considered okay to eat off of a friend's plate? Not like they're going to announce to the table, you know, whatever they might have. I mean, you'd hope that they would. If they yeah. care about you enough, they're not going to, they're going to say, look, I'm, I'm a bit sick, guys. Also, There's if you're no a good need. enough friend, you should know something's up, right? Yeah. You're going out with them. Red, rashy mouth, you know. <laughs> Surely you know <laughs> something's happening. Uh, someone, uh, we got a, a chef that I worked with in a pub would eat leftovers over people's plates, even to the point he'd chew their steak bones. Oh, no. Absolutely no good. We got this one here that made Tom quite sick before. It said, in high school... Sorry. In high school, when I would go to Marion with my mate, he would refuse to spend his money on lunch. So I would be eating in the food court. He would be ta- <laughs> he'd be taking leftover scraps on people's tables to eat. One day, he could only find someone's leftover KFC gravy, and he had that for lunch and drank it through a straw. Yeah, that Disgusting. made the stomach churn. Uh, plenty of people on the phone lines right now. We're going to go straight to Ross in Meadows. Ross, good morning. <coughs> Is it okay to eat off a stranger's plate? Yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah. Really? Yeah, right. So just a complete stranger? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, times are tough at the moment. You know, everyone's struggling. And if there's some good food going there, I mean, if it's a wrinkly sausage, I probably wouldn't. But, you know, these gourmet pizzas that you see going for whatever price they go for, if it's half eaten and it, it looks like a good one, yeah, why not? Is, what's the, would you go, if you saw a pizza there and it was it had a bite out of the one slice, would you go for it? Or is it only when it's, you know, it hasn't been touched, like it's just been sitting there as it's perfect slice? Um, I mean, have we been drinking or is this the start of the night? <laughs> that's, that's what I said. That's, I, think it, I think it really is dependent on how many drinks you've had. Let's say it's yeah. at the end of the night, Ross. Uh, how filthy are we getting? Oh, I mean, I'd be going for it, but the missus wouldn't. And this story is about the missus. So we were at one of those fancy cellar door wineries, all dressed up, got the three kids with us. And, um, yeah, we're looking through the menu, all the pizzas. You know, I don't know what they are, 30 bucks or something like that. Probably want to get a two or three of us. And, you know, you're looking at close to 90 bucks. So yeah. the couple opposite, they, they're looking like they're about to leave. I'm like, well, they've got half a pizza left. And the, the missus is the one that's seen it. She's like, hey, they've, they've just left half the pizza. And it's, you know, wood fire oven and all the rest of it. Like, okay. You know, that, that sounds right. I was surprised she was on board with that. And um, so they hop up and leave this couple, right? They're, they're gone. I've, I've waited 30 seconds. She's just thrown into it. She's probably eating. <laughs> you it's, swooped it's, it's in. Ross sounds, gone, like <laughs> Ross sounds like he's salivating. Ross sounds like he's salivating on the phone thinking about this pizza. <laughs> But get this right, guys. The pizza's gone, and then about ten seconds later, the guy tracks back. So oh. they've had it. I thought, hey, you've forgotten oh. half a pizza. We spent fifty bucks on that pizza. Go get it. He's come back. He's locked eyes on me, oh. and I've just been like, giving him a big smile. Well, the missus has got his pizza in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> to he, he was too embarrassed to stop and say nothing. He wandered around the building and went back. We didn't see him again. Oh, of course, <laughs> you would be absolutely shocked. <laughs> oh, I couldn't stop laughing. So oh, funny. Good on you, Ross. Thanks for getting involved, uh, mate. We appreciate it. That's so funny. Yeah, going to go over to Diane in Taparoo. Diane, what is it okay to eat off a stranger's plate? No! Ew! Yeah, <laughs> gross. My spine is crawling in on itself. 
Mm. I don't even eat off my children's plates and I know where they've been. Well, that's probably a good reason. <laughs> Diane, do you, think, do you think there's any food that's slightly acceptable if it's like a finger food like chips? Uh, not from a stranger. It's one thing if you were out with friends and you get like a bowl of chips to share. That has intention. But no, not a stranger's plate on another table. Gross. Yeah. And if you went on a date with someone that did this, what would you do? Uh, thanks for coffee. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catcher. Good on you. Thanks, Diane. Thanks for getting involved. Thank you. Bye. Hey, we're going to go to Emma over in Kangaroo Island. Emma, can you t- walk us through what happened? Did you see someone eat a, off a stranger's plate? Yeah, so I used to work in a hotel over here and um, whenever, like I was waitressing, and whenever we would um, bring the plates back behind to be scraped off and stuff, one of the chefs would be like, oh yeah, I'll eat the rest of that. And it w- could be anything like, Steak bones, oh. lamb bones, or anything. Oh, God. <laughs> no. You're the, you're the steak bone text. I can't believe that. Is this a regular thing for the chef? It's horrendous. This is his late night meal? Yeah, if he was hungry, yeah. Emma, would you ever eat any of the steak bones? Would you share a bone with the chef? Absolutely not. Lady uh, yeah. and the tramp. <laughs> <laughs> sharing at both mouths. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I get older. The Dave O'Tom and Callum podcast stays the same age. Jeez, Christmas time is here, boys. I'm sure you're both getting very excited leading up to the big day, the big man coming to visit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know what? And I'm no shame in loving Christmas. Me and Tom were talking about it the other day, the turkey, the prawns. It is an absolute festivity. Yeah, it certainly is. And like I said, we just had a bunch of pageants. Of course, the big uh, national pharmacies pageant that was here in the city. But yesterday in Port Adelaide, they also had the little parade they do down Port Road, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Christmas! Why is that Father Christmas screaming at us? (laughs) He seems aggressive about it. Pageant's, you know, always fun. It did add about 15 minutes to my rideshare trip because I added KFC on the way and I got stuck in the traffic of the pageant. Yeah. (laughs) All these people with tubers and, you know, musical (laughs) instruments walking past me (laughs) while I'm sitting there just thinking about that chicken. I'm sorry to hear that happen to you, mate. That's the second time in a week. Yeah, that I've been screwed by a pageant. (laughs) (laughs) I can't get across the road. Well, the advertiser this morning morning they've come out and they're sort of putting together an interactive map of all the best Christmas lights in Adelaide. Oh how good. Yeah it's pretty exciting. Um, they've got things on there so far it's still getting built but they've got a few in Modbury in the Golden Grove area a couple in Norwood they've got Old Pelham Street in Ethelton obviously that one's a go get it every single year. Yeah Old Pelham's really good I feel like you know at the highest status of you know these really good streets you'd feel so much social pressure to keep up the lights. If oh, you ever yeah. walk down one of these streets where there's a lot of lights like an old Pelham Street and there's one house that doesn't do it, oh. you think they're the scum of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think like, what credins are in here that don't want to celebrate Christmas? I mean, yeah, it would be tough living in like one of these places, like Lobethal. Yep. That'd be tough oh, to live up, up there up with, with the lights. It's, yeah. it's peer pressure at its most organic yeah. situation there, isn't it? But it's it? great. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Christmas lights, like I said, they are great. They always get a draw card. And thank goodness this map is still getting updated because there are some absolute rippers near my neck of the woods, let oh, me really? tell you. <laughs> yep, that's right. Pennington has dressed it up for Christmas, boys. And let me tell you, it's as grim as it sounds. <laughs> oh, surely not. So this one that's um, near my house, I sort of was driving around the other day, and it's it's... I mean, the house itself is pretty... uh, It's an average house. It's sort of like an old government house that's been sort of painted and whatever. But out the front, they've got these giant inflatable Christmas decorations. Like, expensive, big, how do you... like? How you going, sort of ones. Yeah, you showed us a picture. It looks great. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) it looks like you're going to go there for a show and maybe purchase some... um, Illicit substances. <laughs> yeah, right. Instead of, you know, Father Christmas sitting there giving out candy canes to the kids, it's something else. <laughs> Absolutely. In your sack. And I also think this area that it's in, it's brave of them to have these decorations, these how you go going decorations, because I'm feeling like every night before bed they're going to have to pack them down. <laughs> 
And every morning, I mean, put them back up. They are super extravagant. They are massive. There's one inflatable man that is, you know, I don't know. It, it looks like it goes over the roof. Yeah, it house. does. It's huge. Yeah, it's like one of those like Christmas soldier kind of people from the Santa Claus movies. Uh, but uh, like, uh, surely they're not packing it down. No, right? well, look, they, well, give them two weeks and let me tell you, they'll regret not doing that because they'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Davo, Tom and Callum, the podcast. I feel like cruise ships are the pinnacle of relaxation. You know, it's what a lot of uh, older couples will do in their retirement and stuff like that and go off and do a big cruise. And, you know, they're meant to be, you know, one of the really good holidays and form of travel. Absolutely. You've got one stop. You don't have to unpack and pack up again. You get everything included. You just get off every day and have a look around a beautiful spot. It's not bad. In theory... It sounds incredible. Yeah. I mean, my parents just got back from a cruise. First one they've ever done. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Yeah. And we've got the unlimited alcohol package. Oh, no. And they were feeling pretty seedy <laughs> all of yesterday. Don't hang around by the side of the boat no. when you're in that package. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that got locked in her cabin. She wasn't allowed to have any more of those um, cocktails on board. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, but that does sound like the lush life, you know, being on the cruise ship and uh, getting to experience all of that. But there is one coming from Queensland to Adelaide and it actually arrives here in Port Adelaide at those docks there uh, today. This okay. morning. This morning it is arriving. However, there has been a little catastrophe on board and that is that there is a big old COVID-19 and gastro outbreak. Get away from me! What did we eat? It's coming out of me like lava! So someone's got a and it's passed around the cruise ship. There's 4,000 people on the Jeez. cruise ship, so there's quite a few, and it's just spread like wildfire. Yeah. They've had to detain people and put them in their little tiny rooms, which, Dave, you said uh, to me before, because I haven't been on a cruise, that they're quite claustrophobic, the rooms sometimes. Well, the thing is, is you've got different categories of rooms, but when you start with an inside cabin, which is usually the one, the lead-in room, yeah. it's literally a room with no windows, nothing. So if you get quarantined in there, you're going to go stir-crazy. Yeah. For I mean, sure. what a double whammy as well. Like, it's not bad enough you've got COVID on board. Some Someone's brought along gastro oh. just to join the party. They're two of the big hitters, aren't they? And yeah. uh, there's been a few people that have had to stay in their room for 10 days and uh, what are the biggest crimes? Not allowed to use the buffet. Oh, oh, well, that's just it, isn't it? I mean, I mean, you think about a cruise, you think about how good that buffet is on the salad bar, you're banned from it. Yeah. You get your food delivered to your little porthole room and they're just sliding it under the door, it seems, for 10 days. So they're coming into Adelaide this morning. Yeah, yeah. we've got 4,000 people potentially oh, with uh, gastro COVID hitting the shores, apparently. Now, surely they won't let them get off. I'm sure they will not let <laughs> just them get off. Just keep them out of the water. It feels like a zombie outbreak yeah, if they do. Really Everyone, does. take cover. <laughs> Put down the mic. What's in the podcast? What's in the podcast? Davo, Tom and Callum, the podcast. When you walk on a footpath, it is, a, it is apparently an indication of uh, how chivalrous you are. And it's come out because a relationship coach on TikTok has said, you know, this is one of the big indicators. This is huge. This is on the equivalent of, you know, opening up your doors for women, etc. Okay, what is? What, what's the... So the idea is that if you're walking along the footpath uh, with a girl and you're a guy, that it is expected that if you're the bloke that you have to be closest to the road and the oncoming traffic. <laughs> and the idea is that you are creating a safe boundary between the road and your girlfriend, partner, whoever you're dating, whatever, where you would pretty much be the one that gets hit by a semi-trailer I'm opposed sorry, to her. I'm sorry, but uh, 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 no one's... Body is going to stop a semi trailer from taking, Unless you know. You're dating Iron Man. Yeah. He can yeah. Stick his hand Edward out. Edward Cullen. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've heard of this before, right? But the reason, the reasoning behind it isn't because of a semi trailer coming at you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it kind of is. No, no, no. It's more so to do with, like, say you're walking along and as a woman, you've got a handbag or something like that. That can get stolen from you if you're on that side of the road. Someone can swipe on past and grab it from you. Oh, right, like on a bike so or something. It's just a sh- <laughs> but it's the same concept in the end. It's about protecting the partner you're So with. it's not like the full Titanic rule, you know, women and children to the lifeboats. No, no, no. I it's... think it's more so just a, it's okay. to show a level of protectiveness about your partner. Well, this I mean, makes more sense. No, no. She, no, no. The co- no the co- I think that's more absurd. I don't think it's what? a regular... I think that's a... Like, 
I think it's more normal the idea that you'd be protecting from a car coming towards you. But what you. are you going to do? You can't do anything, but it's just the implication that you are there to protect. I yeah. think it's more insane the stealing off the bike and stuff because I just haven't heard of that happening that much. Yeah, you've never been to Bali, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I, I don't know though. Like those little things do kind of make you feel good, and I feel like that's sort of setting people back a few years. But I think when the male does those little things that are quite nice, like open. Opening a car door, like standing on the side. Chivalrous stuff. Chivalrous. It doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't need to be over the top. You know, it's not about paying for things or whatever. But there's those little sprinkles of like, oh, that's nice. Like helping someone down the stairs if they're in heels. Yeah, yeah, yes, Tom. I I know you do, babe. You open a door for me. Callum literally pushes a door in my face. (laughs) And we've seen it happen more than once. I'll push you back back into the gunner. (laughs) (laughs) Who said chivalry's dead? (laughs) Can I I also, David, if uh, if you're on a date, with a bloke, uh, would you notice that they're going on the side of the road towards the cars? Would that be something that clicks in your head? I think so, only because in a past relationship that was a discussion that was had because we went to Bali. He made it obvious. <laughs> like, by the way, I'm risking my life and my wallet being stolen being on this side of the road. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, well keep I mean, it up, I, lads. There you go, boys. Uh, stay on the roadside of the footpath <laughs> from now on. It might seem a little dangerous, but you got to do it. <laughs> Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.